The deep state is circling the wagons to protect special counsel Robert Mueller. I'll tell you all about it. Well, something very disturbing is happening that lends credibility to the theory that there is an establishment move on both sides of the aisle by Republicans and by Democrats, even by Republicans who have been very vocally supportive of the president, like Senate Judiciary Chairman Charles Grassley, Senator Chuck Grassley. Well, I don't like what's going on right now. They're now moving to put a bill into committee, starting in Grassley's Judiciary Committee, to protect Robert Mueller. Now, my my concern about this has nothing to do with my support for Donald Trump. Look, I've been overwhelmingly supportive of the president on this show, on air, and other places, but I'm also critical when need be. I understand why the president signed the $1.3 trillion spending bill, but I wish he hadn't. And I think he should have vetoed. He should have sent a message. He would have gotten his military funding. Americans want their military funded. But this is really troubling because this is now showing us that there's pressure by the establishment on the Republican side to not protect this president, but to instead protect who I feel to be an unethical, unrestricted, uh, improper actor, Robert Mueller. I don't believe he's acting in good faith. And many, many legal experts are now coming over to our side of reasoning. So to, to push a bill into committee and a bipartisan bill into committee that, that protects special counsels, well, it has nothing to do with Donald Trump. It, it, it strikes at the heart of our Constitution. See, the Founding Fathers never intended for there to be a shadow Department of Justice because that leads to a shadow government. When you can have all of these unconfirmed people that are appointed by one player, remember, Robert Mueller was appointed by one guy, Rod Rosenstein, who should be fired today. But our system was never intended to have one person appointed by one other person who, opera, uh, who operates outside of checks and balances. It was never the way our system was intended to run. It truly is a constitutional crisis. And Congress has no business putting provisions in place to take away the authority of the presidency to fire people appointed by the executive branch. It's exactly why checks and balances exists. It's exactly why checks and balances exist. It exists so that Congress, Democrats in Congress and establishment Republicans who might not like an outsider president can't take away his power to fire people who work for him because Mueller ultimately works for Donald Trump. He was appointed by Deputy Attorney General Rod Rosenstein, which is a function who works for DOJ, which is an agency of the executive branch. And firing any of those people is a function of the executive branch or the president. Now, this entire thing has made some very strange bedfellows, right? If you had said to me five years ago, four, excuse me, two years ago, that liberal law professor out of Harvard Law School, Alan Dershowitz, was going to be one of Donald Trump's most staunchest defenders when he became a very conservative president, I'd tell you to either stop drinking or give me some of what you're drinking because it's good stuff. But that's exactly what happened. Well, really interesting story uh, at a Newsmax. Now, Bill O'Reilly has been doing some work over there. And former uh, uh, special counsel, President Bill Clinton, not special counsel in the investigative sense, but a very close advisor. He was special counsel to Bill Clinton on, the, on, on many of the scandals around the Clinton administration. Longtime friend of Bill Clinton, Lanny Davis, told Bill O'Reilly that he has provided documents, that Lanny Davis provided documents to the Department of Justice. Let me read this to you. He has provided documents to Department of Justice investigators demonstrating the investigation into Hillary Clinton's emails was botched and predicted that the much anticipated Inspector General's report on the FBI uh, handling, FBI's handling of Hillary's email investigation will be, quote, intensely critical of former FBI Director James Comey and former Deputy Director Andrew McCabe. You heard that right. Let me explain it again. Lanny Davis, who's like this with the Clintons. He was also a very good personal friend of George W. Bush from Yale, but like this with the Clintons, provided information to the DOJ that says Comey and McCabe botched the investigation into Hillary's emails. That's just mind-blowing to me in many respects, but in others, it isn't. 
Interestingly enough, guys like Lanny Davis got slammed, but I had some personal dealings with him back when I was very active in the online security world. I told you before I was in media, I had a company, we tracked uh, sexual predators, pedophiles, terror fundraisers, recruiters online. And I sat on a few boards and I sat on a few task forces and committees and on one of them sat Lanny Davis. And he was this, you know, well, very well-known figure. This was uh, during the Bush administration, the early, late days of the Bush administration into the early days of the Obama administration. And Lanny Davis was this, you know, very well-known, very well-connected DC power broker who was one of the nicest people to me from day one and really an ethical and honest guy in the context in which I worked with him. He heard both arguments. He advocated for some very conservative positions that he thought made sense. He advocated for some very liberal positions that he thought made sense. But he was never a blind partisan. He was never a blind partisan. And he was always very approachable. He was always very easy to talk to, you know, real smart lawyer, always very easy to give advice. One of the other guys on that panel was Richard Blumenthal, Senator Dick Blumenthal from Connecticut, who then was the attorney general of Connecticut. Both Democrats both guys that I thought I wouldn't get along with. Blumenthal was an absolutely horrible, unfriendly, miserable human being. Lanny Davis was a gentleman, really, really nice man, really, uh, I, I found him to be a really honest and ethical guy. So, you know, in the, in the abstract, looking at him as a Clinton ally, this would be shocking to some people. Having dealt with him on a professional level, this doesn't surprise me. This, it really doesn't surprise me. It surprises me, though, that after all these years, he would drop the bomb on Clinton. Who knows what Hillary did to him over the years, like she's done to many, many people. There are so many more elements to this story. I mean, we're, we're learning more and more things by the day. Some really new and disturbing information has come out on Peter Stroke and Lisa Page, the two texting lovebirds, and potential relationships between Andrew McCabe, his wife, and Bill and Hillary Clinton. There's potentially a friendship that goes back years. And I'm going to tell you all about that on my longer show, Off the Cuff Declassified, today, right here on The Rebel. This McCabe, Rosenstein, Mueller, Comey, Trump, Michael Cohen, Jeff Sessions, I add all the players in Stroke Page. McCabe. This story is really heating up by the minute. And I want to be able to bring it to you every single day with the newest developments. To help me keep doing that by subscribing to our premium service at www.therebel.media forward slash shows. 